RVH. Skate to the post, toe to the post, boot to the post. Which one works best for you? Let's find out together, coming up next. Voice over goalie. Hey, Wayne the voiceover goalie here. My channel is all about bringing you awesome goalie content. So if you've liked, subscribed, or commented on one of my videos, you are totally awesome. And do you know who's even more awesome? All of you who have submitted clips of your saves for Saves of the Week. Your supporting my channel by contributing really means a lot. So starting in March, the first video of each month will feature the fan of the month. That fan will be hand-selected by me as someone who represents what this channel is all about. Awesome goalies. So keep sending in your submissions. And while I can't feature all of you weekly, there is someplace else you can go. Check out the Tendy Life YouTube page, where every week they do a top 10 save countdown of all of your save submissions. Tendy Life is one of the fastest growing Instagram pages today, and their YouTube channel will be totally awesome. So check it out here or in the description below. Okay, so today's video, RVH. So for those of you who don't know what RVH is, it stands for Reverse Vertical Horizontal. It's a safe selection that has evolved from the original VH position, where you have one pad vertical against the post and the other one horizontal covering the ice. I don't know why they had to go with RVH instead of just HV. Now there's lots of debates on when RVH should be implemented, and a few of those scenarios are wraparounds, when the puck is below the goal line or in the corner, or if a winger has the puck along the boards. RVH can be a great tool to use to cover down low and still have some mobility. So before we get started, I want to know if you are an RVH goalie. And if so, do you like to use your skate to the post, toe to the post, or boot to the post? Let us all know in the comments below. So there's lots of great discussions about what the best post integration should be for RVH. So I thought we'd take a quick look at three of them and break down how they might work best for you. So let's start with skate to the post. In this method, you drive your skate blade directly into the post, which later gives you an anchor point to push off of. One of the major benefits is that skate to the post allows you to keep your body parallel to the goal line. So really, you're not over committing to the post side and you can still get a good push to cover the pass across. But one of the biggest problems with skate to the post is that you don't get a tight seal. You can see my skate leaves that gap between my pad and the post. And also, I have to lean a lot more to get my body to seal it up. That does a couple things. One, it shifts your weight so you can feel a lot less balanced. But it also increases the space above your shoulder because you have to lean so far. And while it might seem beneficial to keep your body parallel to the goal line so you can quickly cover that space if the pass comes across, when you do that, you're not squaring up your shoulders to the shot, thereby opening the top corner of the net. So what could be a better option? How about toe to the post? With this method, you're aiming to land at the post between the toe of your skate and the toe of your pad. Immediately you can see that the gap between your skate blade and the post is eliminated. And in order to seal the post, you don't have to lean as much. So that really helps with your vertical angle. The challenge can be getting the landing right every single time. When you go skate to the post, you have that entire blade length to land at. But toe to the post means every single time you're trying to hit that spot between your toe and the pad, which sometimes can only be a couple inches. But the huge benefit is that you actually seal that hole between your pad and the post. But if you really want a tight seal, that means boot break to the post. So in the boot to the post method, you're landing with the post directly in your boot break. And while this might seem like overkill because part of your pad is inside the net, it does a couple of things right off the bat. One, it gets a really tight seal down low. So with something like a wraparound attempt, you can really make sure that that puck isn't going to sneak through. But also, it means you really don't even have to lean into the post to seal it. So that definitely helps with your vertical angle and closing up any holes. It also gives you the ability to square up better if there's a potential shot. But the downside is you are totally committing to covering the short side. And pushing off using the shin of your pad can be difficult to gain a lot of power to be able to get across the crease. If we take a look at this comparison shot, you can see exactly how the holes get smaller the closer you get to the post. So what technique is the best for you? Well, it really depends on the play and durability level. RVH can be most effective when the puck is in close and the shooter has no opportunity to snipe you over your shoulder. The further out the puck gets, the more this hole opens up. For me, I like to go boot to the post. One, it's just easier and it's way more consistent for me to land there. And two, it also helps me close up that short side. And if I'm going to get beaten beer league in the RVH, yeah, that shooter's going to work for it. So what do you think would work best for you? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, RVH is just one tool in your toolbox of saves. While it can be your go-to in certain scenarios, the game of hockey is dynamic and sometimes the puck just doesn't bounce our way. But in my opinion, the advantages of the RVH far outweigh the disadvantages. 
at least in most levels, lower than the NHL. <laughs> hey, where do you get the sweet RVH t-shirt? Check it out in my Teespring store. Link in the description below. And because it's Valentine's Day, I want to show you all some love. Use promo code HEART to get an awesome discount. And for those of you that live in my area, use promo code HOT for a wicked awesome discount.